It's mid-February, and over 550 fit, polished, well-trained, and completely ready canine athletes move into the town of Marquette. They are accompanied by 65 mushers along with a multitude of support personnel. They're here for the Jack Pine 30. They're here for the Midnight Run. They're here for the UP200 Sled Dog Championship. Tonight, we'll see the mushers leave and come back. But we'll also get a glimpse of what happens in the 240 grueling miles in between. I'm Brian Whitens, filling in for Buck Lavasser. Welcome to this special edition of Discovering. This is the 24th running of the uh, Upper Peninsula Sled Dog Association's races in Marquette, Michigan. The excitement one will feel, of course, will be the sounds of the dogs. It's almost a, like a symphony of sound from all the different dogs and the, the uh, excitement that they breed within the race. The crowd gets excited and uh, it's kind of a carnival atmosphere, I think. It's a fun, fun place to be as our dogs take off. Eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Here he goes, great ball from the Michi, Minnesota. And we're underway with the UP 200 Sled Dog Championships. Make a noise all the way down. I started uh, mushing in 92. I ran my first UP 200 in 94, and I didn't succeed, and I then I came back in 95 and finished it, and then I finished it ever since, every time I've run it. I've run the Iditarod four times, and uh, I've run out to Race the Sky in Montana. I've run the uh, Pan Am out in Maine. I run it uh, three times, and, uh, and I'm back here just because I'm 70, <laughs> I guess, just to see if I can do it again, still. I think you got to have a few brain cells frozen. <laughs> I don't know what we do. I guess we do the challenge, you know. It's, it's kind of a health program, too. It keeps me active. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Al Hyman from Ludington, Michigan. Well, I seem to enjoy it. My wife doesn't. She'd rather me go to Florida with her. But I don't uh, really enjoy being in Florida that long. I don't mind a week or two, but then I get bored. Mark Wallen from Two Harbors, Minnesota. 24 years running on the UP 200, and Ward has been here 19 times. He does the best to keep all these times. He just the end of the run. We live in Two Harbors, Minnesota, and we live real close to one of the checkpoints for the Bear Grease race, John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. And about 20 some years ago, my wife uh, wanted to go watch the race, and we couldn't believe the dog team's going by. And, and then that year I sent her out with an outfitter and she said all I wanted is four dogs. Well, a lot of dogs later. Uh, it was one of those life-changing moments, you know, marriage, childbirth, and the day she went on a trip with an outfitter, and that was 20-some years ago. So, you know, the cool thing for me, the first race I ever did was the UP, and that was in 95. So this is the 19th trip that we've made here. Uh, uh, it's been a pretty good run coming here. It's my favorite race. I have a lot of friends in the UP. It's been pretty awesome. So uh, it's cool to be here. Well, it's sort of fun. It's fun having to have sled dogs and work. It's hard work, but we make it happen. We were, I was going to do a race called the White Oak, but that was canceled because loss of snow. But my brother, his name is Ian, he's 14, he's done two races already. I love coming to the UP. It's just, it's an awesome, awesome setup. It's really fun. Well, the UP200 is a great opportunity to enjoy the outdoors in Michigan. It's a great opportunity to build some regional economies around the dog sled race today. So bring your families out and enjoy the dog sled race. The 
UP 200 mushers have left the cheering crowds and the support of their handlers behind as they head off on the first leg of their 240 mile adventure, traveling through some of the finest wilderness the Upper Peninsula offers up. To put that in perspective, 240 miles is the distance from the Earth's surface to the International Space Station. Back in Marquette, about an hour and a half after the last 200 musher has vanished into the darkness, the midnight run gets underway. Three, two, one. Here she goes, Shannon Miller from Diamond Bay, Ohio. And that we are underway with the midnight run, Sled Dog Champion. The uh, midnight run this year is approximately 88 miles. Ryan Bergen from Sioux Lagoon, Ontario. Five, four, three. Two, one. Go. The midnight run will rest in Chatham for five hours and they will go on to the town of Munising for their finish line. Well, we're back at the midnight run again. We were here last year for the first time, uh, 2012, and I won the midnight run last year. It was my rookie run and I got Rookie of the Year awards as well as Best Cared For Team award last year. And so we had so much fun on the trails. We wanted to come back and try it again. We're uh, hoping to do maybe a repeat performance if possible, but it's always a lot of tough competition at this race. So we're looking forward to the trail and running the dogs. And it takes a lot of work to get ready for this race. We've got over a thousand miles on the dogs. You know, we start in the fall training and getting them ready for this and running through the winter. And so it's a lot of work that leads up to this race and all the races I have after this. What more? first UP 200 checkpoint. It's somewhere around one o'clock in the morning. Volunteers patiently wait in the cold to lend a hand to arriving mushers. Usually when they get up to you, or, or right maybe about four yards in front of you, start saying, whoa. And there you go, now that's what got it. Somewhere along the trail, day one passed into day two without notice. It's been 68 miles and six or seven hours since Marquette. And one by one, the mushers and their partners glide into the Wetmore checkpoint. UP 200 is an Iditarod qualifying race, which means it must feature an unassisted checkpoint. And what more is it? This is some beaver belly fat. It's just high in protein and high in fat. And uh, When I was out on the trail, I snacked a fish, herring, that I get from Lake Superior. So I kind of rotate it up a little bit. In the cooler right now, I've got beaver meat thawing. So when I get to the first checkpoint, I can feed the dogs right away where most folks, uh, you, you fire up your alcohol cooker and you either melt snow or they'll give you water there, but um, I'll be able to feed my team right away, take care, check their wrists, check their feet in case they have any ice balls, and then we put blankets on them in the first checkpoint, and uh, then I try to get some sleep. Early on, I, I don't think too many folks really sleep much. They're kind of adrenaline rush. After the dogs are fed and comfortably situated for the night, mushers and race personnel can finally relax and catch a few hours of much needed well-deserved rest on the floor of a garage. But rest is short as daybreak quickly approaches. The same fire that greeted the last team greets the first. First one, then another, and another. Dogs begin to sing as if to say, wake up and let's go. A small group who've been put on IR hobble back in dismay, sad not to be making the rest of the journey. Race officials along with a group of five dedicated spectators stand ready to wish the mushers well as they depart for the next checkpoint. One by one, the mushers ready their teams, plant their feet on the runners, and put wet more behind them and vanish off into the UP wilderness. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot. From here, the trail winds along the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. Mushers will be traveling this stretch of trail in the daylight, giving them a welcome glimpse of some of the Upper Peninsula's wondrous scenery. 53 miles ahead lies the checkpoint at Grand Marais. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carrion's welcome. Kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. As the UP200 mushers make their way to Grand Marais, 18 six-dog teams along with their mushers of the Jack Pine 30 have left Gwyn and are racing along the 31-mile trail across the Sands Plains and back to Gwyn. The midnight run mushers are long gone from the checkpoint at Chatham on the second leg of their 80-mile run to the finish line in Munising. It comes in in Munising. This is, uh, we're near between the Mather School and the Ice Arena. And we're waiting for the first dogs to come in now. They should be coming in at uh, 9 o'clock a.m. this morning. while the midnight run comes in. And we sell donuts and we have coffee in the Mather School. It helps warm up the mushers and the crowd here. Uh, we get the music, make sure we arrange the music for the mushers to come in. We get the crowd going. Uh, we sell bells so that people can ring bells as the mushers and the dogs are coming down the hill. We raise money for the animals for the, at the shelter. a crew of 10 vets and um, eight technicians that do the pre-race vet checks before the race to make sure we have everybody happy and healthy going out on the trail and then we stop at each checkpoint and are available um, to give health care and do mandatory vet checks at some of the checkpoints. Um, our job as we see it is to keep the dogs on the trail and the mushers happy behind their dogs. Grand Marais. In the wintertime, it's all about ice fishing and snowmobiling. Today, well, today it's all about dogs and mushers. Welcome to Grand Marais. This is the halfway point of the UP200. And at our checkpoint, the mushers will come in and they will rest their dogs, give them something to eat. The mushers will get something to eat and some rest also. And we're open all day. We have lots of events going on. We've got a silent auction that's running till 4 o'clock. And the Grand Marais Women's Club has food all day. They've got a soup and sandwich luncheon going on. We have UP200 merchandise, we've got artwork on display from the students of Burt Township School, and of course visitors can go out in the dog lot and see the dogs and see the teams and take lots of pictures and cheer for them. Here 
I'm in Grand Marais. I'm at the halfway point. Uh, that last leg was quite long. A lot of snow and um, things went well. All the dogs are pulling hard, so I'm pretty happy about that. I still have 12 dogs. I'll probably go out with 12. They said it was a 53 mile leg, but uh, it ran more like a 65 mile leg. It was just a long, slow slog with all the snow. But uh, the trail was beautiful. I only saw a couple teams out there. Um, right now I'm running probably middle to back of the pack, which is a little bit surprising, but that's okay. Um, my dogs are solid. Usually our strategy is to run a little slower early on and pick up later. Um, probably rest here maybe um, five and a half hours and then take the dogs back to Wetmore and there we'll probably rest another five hours and then from there hopefully we'll make the uh, run to the finish. The uh, ham radio operators, we provide radio communication on the trail between the start line and the finish line and we have 62 operators out in the field uh, that man the checkpoints between Marquette and Grand Marais throughout the weekend and we have uh, 18 checkpoints along the trail. What the ham radio operators do, as the sleds go through the checkpoints, we read off the uh, bib numbers and report the bib numbers back to headquarters here at the Holiday Inn in Marquette. One after another, the mushers and their dogs are led to the starting gate by their handlers, and off they go. The dogs are rested and just as anxious to hit the trail as they were back in Marquette where all of this began. And then, as quickly as it started, it's over. The last musher has disappeared into the night. The cheering is over. The last of the fires fades away. The women's club gives away the last of the sloppy joes. And one by one, the folks of Grand Marais return to their homes. For Grand Marais, another race has come to pass. But somewhere in the night, in a remote part of the Upper Peninsula, 17 mushers and their trusty dogs push on by the light of a headlamp. For them, it's only half over. The next seven hours will bring them back to Wetmore, where they will again feed and bed down their dogs, and then crawl into the back of a dog trailer for a few hours rest. The morning brings a new day, the last day, the final stretch, the last big push to the finish line in Marquette. Well, here it is, the last morning of the UP 200. Uh, I said earlier I was middle to back of the pack, and. Uh, the back of the pack fell out and I am the back of the pack. Uh, we're heading out here shortly, it's a cool morning. You know, the good news for me is uh, doing this race so many times, I get to see this part of the trail in the day. Usually when you come here it's at night, and usually in the past when I've left it's been dark in the morning, so I'm looking at it as a positive. I'll see some trail that I've never seen before. So, dogs are doing good. I think I'm taking out 11 of the 12 I started. Uh, one got a little pooped out. and. They all seem pretty sound, so I'm ready to roll. Wow, who's ready? You guys ready? Must get good on, buddy. Well, you know, the cool thing is, uh, in the sport as a whole, people come from so many different socioeconomic backgrounds. I, I can have a kid next to me who's a high school senior, a guy on my other side is a logger, and then I could have a neurophysicist. So you have, it's the only place I know where people from all walks of life were in this together, and there's a lot of good friendships. And, you know, being out on the trail, uh, you know, my wife and I, we both work full-time jobs, kids in sports, and just running dogs, get out at night. We do most of our training at night. You just hear a pitter-patter of the, of the dogs. Uh, you hear some breathing, maybe a chain jangling, and it's just pure serenity. Um, and then depending, you know, if you're out on the trail and you got a good buddy, there's oftentimes we'll travel together. So I might be sitting on the trail and, uh, and uh, you know, buddy will come up behind me and we'll just be chatting together and 
and we'll say, hey, how's it going? Hey, everything's going great. So there's a lot of camaraderie out there. Even though it is a sled race and, and uh, we're, you know, racing for money, um, you know, my goal has always been to get to the finish line. And uh, wherever I place, it's fine by me. There they are! Looks like we got eight there, so he's got a Ferrari running in. Give him a big round of applause! Let's give it up for Ryan Anderson. This year's UP200 champion. Way to go. Congratulations. You guys ready? Having followed these races from start to finish, I've had the unique opportunity to see all of the people involved. Of course, the mushers. Countless hours of planning, training, and unimaginable dedication just to put a team of dogs at the starting line. And still, they are far more concerned about each other and their dogs than winning any race. And the unselfish dogs who care only about a good scratch on the back and pulling a dog sled countless fans who stood in the cold at all hours of the day and night to wish the mushers and their dogs well. The many volunteers at each checkpoint and road crossing. The judges, timers and various other race officials. The veterinarians, ham radio operators and the people back at headquarters who work so hard to plan and manage this event. Every single one of them doing the absolute best they can for no other reason than to lend a hand. Can't remember the last time I saw a race with so many winners. <laughs>